Alhamdulillah wa salatu wa salam ala nabiyyana Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam amma bar habit fila question was asked about the maturidiya and uh, the ashaira uh, or ashidis are they from ahl sunnah because there's a lot of youth and this seems to be the new dawa of yasir qadi and and there's others of course that preceded him in the muslim world and uh, all over the world uh, are they from ahl sunnah very important before we look into this this question is we have to look at the term sunni and ahl sunnati wal jamaa if you will as uh, terminologies and so sunni it has a general use or a general use as a as a term and it has a specific use as a term okay when we uh, and actually I've I made it uh, the opposite the category should be over here I should have these over here so let's take it like here and go like this and take this and put it over here so meaning that in the general sense we use sunni to refer to those who are non-shia to refer to the groups that are in the fold of Islam that are non-shia okay and this is how how it's been understood for uh in many communities and for uh you know over over time now to really look into the details of that that is something uh, a bah that's a piece of research but in general what we want to say is uh as a general sense of the term sunni it refers to all of those groups and individuals that are in the fold of Islam that are non-shia so we say for example you'd say they were sunni sects okay so in in that general sense then of course you would if if you're mean in the general sense for the general usage of the term then you would of course classify ashadis those that are in the fold of Islam that you know don't have any bid'ah mukaffara and maturidiya you know i don't know enough about their itiqad if they believe in grave worship or i don't i don't know enough to speak on that so that's a a, a mas'ala for a bath you know that is something worth researching but anyhow any uh groups or sects that have bid'a kufriya you know that they have bid'a mukaffara that take them out of the fold of Islam then they're not really within the context of that discussion okay so as we said in a general sense non-shia muslims are considered sunni in the specific usage so the specific category should be here so in fact we could just say here to make sure that it's clear specific as a specific terminology here we refer to uh, a sunni or and as a group we say ahlu sunna throughout time these are some of the names that ahlu sunna ahlu sunnati wal jamaa uh, took as names okay they of course at the time of the sahaba radiyallahu ta'ala anhum ajma'in there was no uh, need for a name but you will find some athar uh, that uh, uh, evidence the use of uh, ahlu sunnah and likewise speaking about ahlu bid'ah you have uh, narrations on the sahaba radiyallahu ta'ala anhum ajma'in and so as a specific terminology and the way in the context that we're used to using it we would say someone who's a sunni is someone who's from ahlu sunnati wal jamaa or they are from ahlu sunnah was another name uh, also throughout history they were referred to as ahla athar you know the, the 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 people of the narrations meaning and and that goes to the next category also ahla hadith you know the people of hadith you know a lot of the hadith uh the scholars of hadith the narrators and the compilers of hadith they were known as ahla hadith and they had a certain creed they did have a certain creed and methodology and they tended and this is where salafis contemporary salafis have the uh tend to be more literal inter- interpretation in their approach because ahla hadith was more literal they were more literal in their approach not and i would beg to argue or beg to differ with those who say that they were totally literalists no because they did look at the illa they looked at the reasoning and the hikm 
They looked at hikma and wisdom and the reasons for, uh, you know, when they were making uh, adjudication and rulings and, uh, and so on and so forth regarding fiqh and, and regarding other masai in, in the religion. So they weren't total literalists, as you would say, for example, Ibn Hazm and the the Zahiriya Madhab. Okay, that they were very much they take a hadith, khalas, and they take it on a, its a apparent meaning only, and they don't look at the the uh, the reasoning or the hikam, none of that. They just take it, and they were very uh, very very literal. So that you would say are very literal. They were literalists. They were ultra literalists, if you will. Whereas Ahla Hadith are very literal, and that's how they, for example, looking at, at Asma'i wa Sifat. That's the difference between us, for example, in the understanding of Ashadis and Maturidiyah. Uh, we say, for example, Allah Tabarak Ta'ala says, Fiqtab al Kareem, Ar Rahman, Allah Aras Istawa. The most merciful, he rose above his throne. So we, as Salafis, and which is in accordance with Ahla Sunnati wa Jama'ah, in accordance with Ahla Athar, because there's a silsila. You know, there's a, a chain, you could say, in inheriting the Aqidah, in inheriting the Minhaj, that contemporary Salafis are striving to follow the way of the Salaf Asadeh. They are striving to follow the way of Ahl Hadith. So that's how they take their usul. That's why they can't even see those things that some of these contemporary individuals are claiming that, you know, we need to look forward, we need to, uh, you know, you know, go forward, and there's many different uh, aqidas that are valid, and you know, as long as you take one, and you know, al hadith, al sunnah, al athar, the Salafis can't even see that. That's they can't even see that. They don't want to see that because they know that there's safety in the religion and adhering to what the Book of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala says, and the uh, narrations of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi wa Alaihi Wasallam, and what the Sahaba radiallahu ta'ala anhum were upon. So they find safety there. They they don't look outside that. Whereas you find, for example, contemporary progressives, okay, and we mentioned that in, in one of the last videos we talked, uh, when, when we had a discussion about some of these topics and we talked about Yasser Qadi and, and some of these others. I believe we talked about that or that's a forthcoming video. And that the uh, progressive minhaj methodology of these progressives and we're talking about the extreme ones. For example, Al Fadl, the one, uh, the woman who was leading the prayer in, in the East Coast, uh, and I think she leads a congregation. You have some gay massage. You have a, a lot of uh, the Somali woman who is a, uh, you know, an apostate. You know, these people that they, they have, uh, uh, they they consider themselves are are part of a progressive league, and they literally have an organization. Okay, I read about, it, I studied it, I. Put, talked about it in my my PhD and so they one of the things and you see the difference so Ahl Sunnah as I said they're looking at those three sources that's their master of understanding Kitab was Sunnah and the uh, understanding of the Salaf Khalas. we stop there the progressives for example they take more of a rational approach okay and they're even more extreme than many of the rationalists you know so they they have this eclectic uh, methodology. They like what the Mu'tazila had to offer. They like what the Jehemiah had, and and different aspects of the rationalism, meaning that they give preference to their intellect. So they say, hey, that doesn't make sense in this contemporary time. We're going to abrogate it. We we don't need it. You know, Islam is more than that. It's it's a spiritual finding. It's 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 something intrinsic. It's a spirit, and we can take from many different uh, ways. And so they, where they go and they get into uh, bid'ah, even bid'ah mukaffara, it's easy for them to fall into the uh, bid'ah, which takes you out of the fold of Islam, because they have a tendency. They take from everywhere, and literally, they say. And I brought some of the quotes in one of the videos prior. They said, "Hey." You know, we don't restrict ourselves to, you know, those sources like those literalists, like the Salafis. They really hate Salafis. They call them Wahhabis. They hate Wahhabis. Okay. So, they really hate them because they find that they're the ultimate, the epitome of uh, repressing intellectualism. Because these guys just want to think outside the box and they want to go forward. They want to be progressive. So progressive that they're just progressed themselves out of Islam. Literally. And, I, and I'll tell you this, this is a real quote. So they talk about things like 
uh, you know, we need to quote from Bob Marley. We need to quote. And I was a Bob Marley fan before Islam. Okay, I, you know, that that was an issue, but I don't look for that for my spiritual guidance because I'm a Muslim. My sources are Kitab Allah wa Sunnah Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and the uh, and the the the, uh, the Sahaba رضي الله تعالى عنهم أجمعين. That's my 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 sources. You know, I'm looking at divine sources. I'm not looking about someone who uh, was encouraged by Ganja or whatever else they were. Uh, uh, you know, revolutionary movements. It's not. It's not. We had to, we had to throw that aside. Okay. So they quote from Bob Marley. They say you know Bob Dylan. Okay. Um, uh, Aristotle, Plato, you know, all these philosophers and stuff, so you can see their relationship with rationalism. And they directly even say, we, you know, some one of the guys, the author of this text, talks about uh, that. And I'm sorry I've got off topic, but let's let's get back on, on track. So as I said, Salafis take a more literal, uh, literalist approach. More literalist. I didn't say totally literal, but more literalist, because that's where we think and believe the foundation of understanding is. That it's uh, that we look to the literal text before we look at uh, a more figurative uh, interpretation. Whereas Ashiris, Maturidiya, and many other uh, sects that are, as they say, Ahl Kalam, okay, they take a more a more uh, uh, you know they believe in what is called Majazi, uh, that is um, you know figurative uh, language and metaphorical. So, for example, in the ayah we mentioned, Ar Rahman ala Ar uh, Rahman ala Ar Estoa. Okay, so we say the most merciful rose above his throne. We take that because that's what the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. That's what Allah tabarakatala says. The Messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam concurred. Uh, we see other uh, hadith of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam talking about these issues, saying that Allah subhanahu wa taala descends to the lowest heaven, lowest third of the night every every. You know, as the Prophet or Kama Kala Nabi Sallallahu that the that Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala, our Lord, He descends to the lowest heaven every last third of the night. Ahl Sunnah says, okay, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi didn't explain that away and say that it means this. Uh, you know, it's in this time in China, in the outer peninsula, it's like this. Seattle, Washington, is like this. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi didn't give us those details. He left it as it was. And we see that so the asl of the the speech of Allah subhanahu wa taala and the sunnah of the message of Allah sallallahu alaihi is literal, and this is how the Sahaba of the Allah understood it, and the Tabi'in with Tabat Tabi'in. Then there came those, and during their time also, who began to, uh, you know, but more so afterwards, who began to make ta'wil and, and change it because they didn't feel it fit their intellect, and they wanted to flee away from. The uh, those people who make a resemblance between Allah Subhanahu Taala and His creation, the mutashab, the mushabbihin, okay, those, those people who uh, uh, make tashbih between Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala, make a resemblance between Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala and His creation. But Ahl Sunnah instead they take a more literal li literal approach, and this is the method uh, of the Salaf, and this is uh, what Salafis take that they look to this more literal. Interpretation and they don't go beyond those texts. So, for example, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Kitab al Kareem, uh, So, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, in this ayah he says, uh, There is nothing that resembles him. So, Ahl Sunnah says, Khalas, There's nothing that resembles him. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala affirms that he does possess hearing and sight. And so Ahl Sunnah says, Khalas, Allah Tabarakatala, He hears and sees. He's the all hearing. He's the all hearing and the all seeing. And we know what hearing and sight means. So we believe in that. We believe Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala hears and sees. But we go back to the first part of the ayah, ayah and we say, There's nothing like him. So his seeing, his hearing is perfect. It's perfect, unlike ours. Ours is limited, okay? And that's just to give us a, some insight into some of these differences, why we have so many differences. And they're not acceptable differences, meaning we can't say that this is ikhtilaf, uh, what, what is referred to as ikhtilaf to know what. 
meaning gradations in ikhtilaf or ikhtilaf that doesn't contradict. But rather we say these issues in creed especially, these uh, come from the Bab of uh, ikhtilaf fabad, where it's totally a contradiction or they're co totally op opposing ways of understanding. Because their usul is different than our usul. Our usul is more literal and their usul is more figurative. And they have a whole different methodology of how you understand the Qur'an and how you understand and interpret the Sunnah and especially when it comes to names and the names and attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So now I just want you to get this, get, get an insight. There's so much uh, uh, that we can derive from this lesson and why there's differences and why it's not acceptable those people who say that it's okay just to choose an etiqad because there's ikhtilaf tabad. There's no way they can all be right. There's no way they can all be right, and they can all be the sabil al mu'minin. They can all be the path of the mu'minin, and we're ordered to follow the haq. We have to follow the haq. Okay? A uh, last point I want to mention, because a lot of people bring this as shibahat, is they talk about, well, what about, you know, uh, Imam al uh Ibn Hajj al Askalani, all these imams, and we say that they are imams of Ahl Sunnah. Those are imams of Ahl Sunnah. We love them, we have their books, we benefit. But what we say, how do Salafis deal with this shubha, this doubt? Salafis, one of the ways that the scholars mention is that, for one, we don't have the ulama sunnah making tibdi of those great imams. Instead, they refer to them as great imams. But their mistakes in Aqidah are pointed out. So, meaning, I love Imam al -Nawi. And how many books do we use all the time? The Riyadh Salihin. Uh, Arba'in uh, uh the explanation of Shah uh, Sahih Muslim. You know, you can't do without that Imam's books. However, when it comes to the Bab of Al Asma'i wa Sifat, we say he made mistakes there. And we don't follow anyone in their mistakes. I don't care who it is, from contemporaries or the past. We don't say, well, Hassan al Basri had this uh, mistake. We love him just because we love him. We're going to follow it. Imam Abu Hanifa had this uh, issue in Imam. We're going to take no. We say the Imam yuhti fi dalik, walakin mazala fi dairat sunnah. So we say that he made a mistake in that, but he still is from Ahlus Sunnah with Jamaa. So this is very important for us to understand that yes, sometimes a person can make a mistake in creed and still be from Ahlus Sunnah. Where we have problems is when people take a whole methodology or people the truth is known to them and they make these mistakes and then they're I need you know they're uh, they're arrogant and they refuse to accept the truth so this is uh, and, and if the truth you know you've established the proof and he understands the proof you know, he has knowledge, he's, un, he's able to process that information and understand what you're talking about when you come from the Book of Allah and the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and the Athar of the Salaf al-Salih, Ridwan Allahi If he can process that and he still pers persists on what he's upon, then you leave him and you leave him and you consider him not from Ahl Sunnah. So I hope that that's something that can clarify for us. And so the Shahid, as far as the question, is that no, in the specific sense, we don't regard uh, uh, the Asha'ira and Maturidiyah and a lot of these other sects as Ahl Sunnah. The Khwana Muslimin, we don't say they're Ahl Sunnah. Jamaat al Tabliq, we don't say they're from Ahl Sunnah. But we say that they're Sunni in the general sense. They are our Muslim brothers. They still have rights over us. But they also have bid'ah that we can't accept. And because of due to those mu'ana, those prohibitors, from being considered from Ahl Sunnah, we don't put them in the Da'ira to Ahl Sunnah. And we ask Allah Azza wa Jal, the Almighty, to accept our good and forgive our evil. Anything I said that was correct was only from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Anything I said that was incorrect was truly from myself and the Shaitan.